This is Tech on Hour 1, Episode 93, Learning to Program. I'm Michael Plasmar. And I'm Reed Dan. And today we're going to show you how to get started programming from the very basic graphical programming all the way up to advanced big boy programming. All right, okay. so since, uh, compu since when computers were very first invented, you have to write programs for them. And learning to program a computer is get, can sound pretty advanced, but hopefully today we'll show you some basic ways to get started. Right, from the, the really basic thing for little kids to getting started with uh, real programming languages. Um, and learning to program is always a good thing because you can uh, make your little utilities. Um, so you have a little need that has to get fixed. It's always a handy, employable skill. Um, I feel like learning to program makes you smarter. Um, right. It just, you learn like logic stuff and it just, you can think better. Right. I, like. I think it, it definitely should be taught in schools as like a widespread thing. Um, like part you learn um, physics and stuff, even though you may never use that sort of stuff, is because it helps develop your reasoning ability. And programming is, again, one of those things. Um, helps you think like abs abstractly and mechanically about a particular problem. Um, so to get started, I recommend buying a book. Uh, not really using online tutorials. I don't know, Reed, you're, you seem to be a fan of online tutorials. Well, for learning web stuff like HTML or PHP, you can go to uh, W3Schools. Yeah, that's. I think they have really good tutorials. Or I, uh, there's lynda.com for video tutorials if you learn visually. Right. I like a book because you, you might end up paying like 30 or 40 or $50, um, but you get a really good introduction. I really like this Head First series of books because it um, I learn visually and it's like very cartoonish. Um, you see like it's not uh, like big blocks of text like standard books. This is a pretty visual quick start guide. It's um, a bit visual but it's still very much like your standard computer book type thing with code examples and stuff whereas this is <coughs> Whereas this is, you know, very graphical and cartoonish, and really gets your feet wet in the thing. Um, like a tutorial might be twenty or thirty pages, whereas this a tutorial is like two pages. So, head first definitely is more limited, um, but really, you know, gets you up to speed really well. So I guess you just have to think about what kind of learner you are, uh, and you might be buying a book, even listening to a podcast if you're more. Right. Visual or listening later. I definitely think buying a book is worth it because, you know, the the author is putting the time into making sure it's a really good thing. Whereas tutorials, I think. Yeah, I'd say not. Don't just find some random website that's gonna walk you through it because sometimes their tutorials don't work. In it's the just end. it's just gonna frustrate you more. I definitely recommend going out and getting a book. So I recommend getting a project as the next thing. So sure you can go through, maybe the first thing you'd want to do is go th first before you go through like an example, like this includes a full e-commerce system and you may want to use their code snippets and you know page through those and see how they work. But then to really learn it, you have to have some sort of project. Uh, Michael Dovin and I worked on something called Tecker, um, T-E-C-K-E-R. Actually, it was sort of the genesis for this show it was originally designed to be um, sort of the podcast of Tecker, and we we're going to answer questions off Tecker. Uh, it was the original design. Um, since then, Tecker has not really been updated at all, and the show sort of continued as sort of the only viable part kind of left from it. Um, but what Tecker was really good at was helping me learn to program. Like, if I had a particular you know, I started by copy and pasting scripts from the book, like the login system, copy and pasted from the book. But then if I wanted to do something that wasn't in the book, for example, an image upload and cropping system for the, the user images, then I had to put together stuff I learned from the book and stuff that I Googled, um, put together like a complete system. Yeah, so 
there are little examples in the book help you learn the basic stuff, which you should definitely go through. But then you need to venture out on your own, do research, and not just copy and paste code to right. actually start coding yourself. Uh huh. Or maybe copy and pasting like um, code from different places because code standards differ, and then you sort of understand what exactly is needed and how do you adopt that code snippet into your existing code. That's that's how I got started as well too. Is t looking at existing code, seeing like what I could modify, like. Um, if it said like uh, you know border equals five picks, if I said all right, what if I do border equals twenty picks? Of course, that adds a bigger border. But then you know that sort of hacking existing stuff, making small changes, you sort of learn the system. And now I just write code like I know how to solve a problem, and I can just write it without having to copy and paste from anywhere or use the book as a reference. Um, so let's show some different programming languages. All right, to begin programming, you can't just make a computer program. You have to decide what language, kind of like human language, that you right. want to write it in. Uh, there's programming languages for writing applications on the desktop, like Windows, Mac, and Linux. And then there's programming languages for internet and web and even calculator. And then there's also languages for like s smaller programs, like one we'll show is um, Scratch where the program runs inside the Scratch program. So it's not like a total uh, pro application for Windows. It's not like you're going to code iTunes in Scratch. Instead, you're going to do like games and stuff inside of Scratch. Um, Adobe Flash is similar. Yeah. You don't, you don't make like a computer application. You're making like a game inside Adobe Flash, but a lot of the same principles are there. Yeah, so uh, first you decide what you want to learn. You can learn stuff like HTML or PHP for the internet. You can learn stuff like uh, TI-83, calculator programming. Or you can just learn basic stuff like Scratch is uh, a nice program for, I guess, younger kids. To yeah, begin so let's go through these. Um, Turtle Art is a very basic program. Uh, all three of sort of all of these sort of systems where you put together, um, here is an example, you put together blocks, this is in Spanish actually, but the idea is kind of you start here and then I guess that might say wait five seconds, repeat 60 times, um, and then wait like 100 times with each, and then you sort of put all this together. This is like turn in a circle. so. By the time you have this, you have this turtle here that's walked in a circle and placed a dot every um, 30 degrees. Yeah, to me, actually, this looks a lot like Lego Mindstorms, those little blocks to begin programming. If you're not actually writing the code, each block represents a piece of code, and you just drag them in. Right, and that's the best, I think, for getting started for, um, for kids, is definitely putting these blocks together uh, and sort of putting something really cool, like getting the turtle to walk in a circle. And it's visual, too. You see the turtle walking in a circle. It's not like Tekker, which is like a text-based content system. You're doing a little turtle walking around in a circle. Um, TI-83 Basic. This is actually how I started in 8th grade and ninth grade when I had my TI-83 calculator. Reed, did you do any calculator stuff? Uh, just basic stuff. You can begin programming little programs on your calculator to help you with math stuff. You can do like, uh, you put in the diameter and it finds the volume for you. Yes, that's, that's the very simplest. I actually did those from the calculator manual. That's like a five line program. Calculate the volume of something um, or the area. So the area of a circle might be, uh, or like, let's just do a simple like volume of a, um, volume of a rectangle. It's length times width times height. Um, so then you say the program is just prompt for the length, prompt for the width, prompt for the height, output length times width times height. Or you can do like radius of a circle. You put in the formula for radius. You have it prompt each of the parts and then it does the calculation and outputs it. Yeah. So that's the, the real simplest. In, out, um, scratch. Next uh, Scratch is a program developed at MIT for creating, I guess, little games and uh, just basic stuff like that. 
Yeah, so Scratch, I think, is a little more advanced than Turtle Art. You still get those same blocks to put together. Um, it's like Adobe Flash in that you build these little programs. Like, this is someone... Um, oh, you need Java to show the projects. But, uh, you know, it's like little games and stuff you can build. Uh, cool gra another cool graphical way to get started. Um, a step up from Turtle Art. Uh, but still sort of like a kid kid language to work with. Uh, Squeak eToys, uh, more of the same as Scratch. Squeak is, um, as we said, has that eToys thing where you do, um, where you are doing the, you know, that sort of block putting together, but then the real Squeak is um, sort of a text-based language. There's this great online free book, uh, Squeak by Example, which you can read and we'll have examples for you of programs you could put together and this is really typing real programming. Python is a programming language again it's a sort of a real real programming language you're actually doing the uh, the typing and everything and it can be either used for desktop or web purposes. Uh, Python is where you're actually starting to write the code not dragging blocks. Yep. Uh, it's pretty powerful. They're just full, real applications uh, made in Python. Python is a good thing because you can do scripting. So it's a scripting language is just a real simple uh, stuff, like what we mentioned with the TI Basic, where you prompt for this, prompt for that, prompt for that, do a calculation, display calculation, sort of an orderly step. More advanced programs um, do all sorts of object-oriented, uh, different stuff, different views, and really gets complicated when you, you know, if you're building something like iTunes, you're not going to use a scripting language, you're going to use a real powerful something stuff. But I think it's best to get started on a scripting language like Python. Um, for Python, MIT actually posts through OpenCourseWare, their intro to computer science is taught in Python. And you can read their, um, you know, lecture notes and stuff. That's another tutorial source if you want to learn Python. Uh, another thing you could check out is Java. Java is software from Sun Microsystems that uh, you can program on both the desktop, the web, and on mobile devices. Yeah, Java is really what I mentioned, that, that second type. It's not that easy scripting. It's that more complicated, advanced stuff. And the AP Computer Science program, which I believe they're cutting, I think, um, but it did use Java as its start language. So Java is a little more advanced for your more, um, you know, your more complicated applications. If you're building something like iTunes or something with a lot of screens, then you use Java. If you want to build something simple, use a scripting language like Python. Java's kind of, eh, I wouldn't really recommend it to someone trying to learn to program. Yeah, I think definitely a scripting language. Like for someone sort of I think um, Python is sort of like a good choice for someone like our age, sort of high school, college age. You don't want to, you know, be snapping blocks together. You might do that for like a week or two, but you you really want to learn how to actually program. And then Python is really, a really good choice. Um, last is developing for the web, and I use PHP. That's the language I develop in, um, which is a, a sort of a scripting language. Um, that is used on the web, uh, optimized for the web. If you use the LAMP platform, Linux, Apache, PHP, MySQL, all free and open source, easy to get started. Um, my first website was $5 a month. Uh, web pro pro website programming is good because it's really easy to get people involved and to get people to visit. You know, There's nothing that your visitors have to download or install. It's just building a website like Tekker. Tekker is built in PHP, MySQL, LAMP platform, again, started $5 a month, get people to see it, get people to come visit it. I personally think that web dev is where stuff is going. Um, yeah, definitely. With so many things going, web 2.0, and all the desktop applications nowadays are moving onto the web, it makes a lot of sense to be learning web stuff, not desktop programming. Yeah, although um, the more advanced uh, web stuff is really... Um, sort of using those components of that advanced desktop stuff. So, 
So learning like an advanced desktop language doesn't mean that you won't know anything about web programming. It's just, you know, it's another sort of thing. It'll take you a little bit to get up to speed. A uh, hard part about web programming is that it's sort of hard to get started, like the, the demo, like setting everything up for the first time might be like 30 minutes of work by the time you figure out how an FTP works and about how you can access your MySQL. Yeah. Um, Whereas something like the, the visual stuff like uh, Squeak or um, Scratch sort of has everything, and Python sort of has, not so much Python though, has everything up to date and like you can write your first program in like 10 seconds and hit go, whereas web programming, it, you kind of have to learn how you know, upload your files, all your get your website fit together, set up, all that stuff. All your pieces fit together. So. Uh, you know, depending on what you want to start, hopefully we gave you a lot of choices and learning to program is definitely a rewarding um, thing in a career or in helping you learn to think and approach problems. Uh, I'm Reed Dane. And I'm Michael Plasma. Enjoy programming. To watch this episode again or to watch any of our prior episodes, you can visit our website 911.tecker.net, T-E-C-K-E-R. And on the website we have uh, our prior episodes as well as you can view them directly on the website or you can download them in WMV for Windows, iPod or QuickTime format for your iPod or if you have iTunes installed, an MP3 audio only version of the show and a WMV HD version of the show which you can download via BitTorrent that looks really really clear uh, and in pristine HD quality and instructions for downloading via BitTorrent are also on the site. On the right hand side we have more information about us and about each of the members of the show as well as quick links to all of our prior episodes and links to the RSS feeds for each of the formats that we release the show in and links to subscribe to the show in iTunes if you have an iPod, an Apple TV, an iPhone, any Apple device you can click on that link in either video or audio format you can also in iTunes search for Tecker, T-E-C-K-E-R uh, in the iTunes store and then you can find our podcast that you can subscribe to free. Also if you do not have a if you do not have an iPod if you have like a generic MP3 player then you can use the uh, you can still listen to our show if on our website you subscribe to this MP3 audio version in a feed catcher in a pod catcher like Juice. Uh, you can search for Juice on Google download that program and then it will load the shows automatically onto your uh, generic MP3 playing device. If you have any questions about the show or about technology, you can send us an email at 911 at tecker.net or you can leave us a voicemail at 610-572-2847. Thank you so much for watching Tecker 901.